Hello and good day to you out there. Live streaming from the ICF. I'm Matthew Layton coming to you live from Duisburg in Germany. We're going to be following for the next couple of hours the B finals and the C finals. And then on 11.02 Central European time, that's in two hours time, we're going to go live for the A finals. Christoph Konov in your picture now. He was the under 18 world champion. As you can see, they're on the 1,000 meter line. It's the C1, so they're in canoes. Expect about four minutes of action. The weather is fairly perfect I'd say for fast canoeing there's no wave to speak of there's no wind to speak of it's a little bit fresh out there but that won't affect these guys and let's see who's going to perform normally you'd expect the fastest athletes to be in the central lanes first few meters what they do this most important thing establish themselves a good start set their pace and then make their plan Athletes, Belarus, Ukraine, Italy, Czech Republic, Hungary, again Czech Republic, France, Mexico and Slovakia. So we have a good spread out here above the board. As you can see, Early in your picture, it looks like in lane two, Ukraine off to a good start. They have some good quality athletes here. I suppose the big news of the day is that Yuri Shaban didn't make it through to the final of the C1 200 meters, obviously the Olympic and world champion there. That was a bit of an upset. Apart from that, yesterday, the last couple of days, there haven't been that many surprises. Most of the, the big names in this huge field, there's over 610 athletes in 52 countries competing. As you can see on the bottom of your screen, I'm not going to bore you with the same thing as you can see, but Ukraine, Italy, Hungary as we speak. Carlo Tacchini from Italy. There's no advantage for the left-handers or the right-handers today. It's good, fair racing. Clearly some of these athletes will be disappointed to miss out on the A final. Others will be delighted to put down a marker in this very, very competitive field. Often people say that this is more competitive than the Olympics in the sense that you can have two athletes from each country competing here. So halfway through the race and there are three athletes moving ahead of the field. Italy, Czech Republic and Hungary. Jaroslav Radon for the Czech Republic. Clearly he's in the C2 1000 partnership with Philip Dvorak in lane six. It'll be interesting to see how these two friends compete against each other. That is coming into view now here. We have the best seat in the house. We're just next to the finishing line. You need to up their pace for the final push over the last 200 meters. And so far it's neck and neck. Italy against the Czech Republic. As you can see, they're following stroke for stroke. Yaroslav Radon pulling ahead slightly. Tuned in. We're going to be live with you for the next four hours or so. Following the B's and C finals at first, and then we move on to the major A finals. That's eight A finals we're covering on national TV in a couple of hours' time. This is the national center for the German training. They know it inside out. Coming to the last 200 meters, and it looks like we have a two horse race Czech Republic against Italy. They keep swapping the lead as you've seen in the last three or four hundred meters. It's now Italy with a slight advantage. Carlo Ciccini looks like he's coming through. It's into the last hundred meters. You can see the boys change from yellow to red. He has a three quarters of a length advantage over the Czech Republic. Lane number seven, Roman Bugne, one of the two Bugne brothers, cousins rather, is coming in to save, but coming to the last 20 meters. It looks like Italy is going to take the first victory of the day. And yes, it is. Italy take it from Czech Republic with a fast finishing France. And in lane number eight, it's Mexico. The Olympian. All seven athletes within a couple of seconds. 
good tight racing here in Duisburg. And your picks are Carlo Tuccini from Italy takes the first victory of the day. As you can hear the speaker in the background announcing that there's two minutes to the start of the next race. Unofficial timing. Four minutes, two seconds. Carlo Tacchini from Italy takes the gold. Yaroslav Radon takes the silver. And Mugnet from France takes the bronze medal. Team leader of Ukraine. Team leader of Ukraine. K1, 1000, the C final. Team leader of Ukraine. Jos Zakrasek, who often makes the A final, might be a little bit disappointed with this result today. John Boynton, a loyal service to British canoeing for the last many, many years, lying up here. Tibor Gesko, and he makes the jams, he makes the training camps, and the on this course, it'd be very, very familiar water. Telka Diaz de Oliveira Jr. from Brazil. Brazil had a big team in Portugal, Montemor, or Velo last weekend, and they also have a significant team here today. On the start line, Fabio Wiesle, number eight, often makes the B final for Switzerland. And they're off. Well, a flying start in lane number nine for Austria, Christoph Kornfend. But it's a long race, another three minutes and 20 seconds to go. Well, a moment, Martin Nathal in lane number two and Fabio Wies in lane number eight, slightly off the pace. Bartosz Stabno. For Poland in lane number seven. Looks like he's decided to go out and set a quite a fast and dynamic pace there. Still leading the place, lane number seven, Poland. Duisburg, the conditions of weather slightly different to yesterday. Yesterday we had sun in the morning with rather overcast in the afternoon and it was like a mill pond. We were having supper here last night about eight o'clock in the evening. As you can see, there's slight ripples on the water but there's really no, no wind to speak of. Coming up to the halfway mark in Duisburg. The course built around about 1935. They've had so far five world championships here, the last one in 2013. Great Britain, they had a development squad put out in Portugal last week and now it's the, the big guns are here in full force. Split time 146 at the halfway mark.
their number four taking a full length lead now with Germany on their tail. See there, Joshua Krasek in lane number three, falling a little bit off the pace. And Bram Brandes, who makes a lot of finals, he's uh, 250 meters to go, he's really going to have to do something special to make something here. But it's Great Britain in the lead with 200 meters to go. One and a half seconds ahead of Germany. Great Britain now making the final push, 130 metres to go. But Germany's looking strong. Lane seven, Poland, and lane eight, Switzerland, certainly not out of it, but it looks like Germany has really put the power down when it matters. Tibor Tesco comes in, accelerated magnificently in the last 50 metres and takes a well-deserved victory. Great Britain come in second with Poland taking up the third medal position. Very brave, brave performance from Great Britain, just perhaps running out of steam in the last 50 metres. Well, as you can see there from the slow mo, there's no doubt about the winner. This was the K1 1000 C final. So it clearly will have the B final and the A final to come later today. But this huge field, 612 athletes, I believe, have been taking part. Put it into context, I think there were about 330 in Portugal last weekend. Germans clearly have a, a, a large team with over 50 athletes competing. Yesterday they had some really, really strong performances in the heats and the semis. Uh, started the day off with Sebastian Brendel winning, leading, sorry, in the C1-1000. Max Hoff looked really, really good in the K1-1000. Well, here we are, this unofficial results is Tibor Geske of Germany, first across the line in 3.36. Johnny Boynton from Great Britain, nearly a second behind, but led for a large proportion of the way, and Poland take the third, the bronze medal. As you can see in your picture there, you've got the New Zealand uh, K2s, K4 girls taking a bit of the atmosphere in to see how it's going to be. Now it comes into the K1000 men B final. Adam Van Kuwerd in lane number six. Uh, he, I don't know, he didn't have the dream rate yesterday. He was with Joseph Dostal in the heat. They looked like they were coming through really, really, semi-finals rather, looked like they are coming through really, really easily to win. And then suddenly the last second, Uzbekistan overtook, uh, overtook Adam and uh, must be kicking himself all night there. So uh, a minute left, the starters calling them in. There's Adam Van Kuyden. Four Olympic medals. Elance Panikuk had lots of success in the K2. You can see them lining up now. Marty McDowell, New Zealand lane one at the top, changed his coach in the last year, so he's with the camp of Gordon Walker, who also trains Lisa Carrington. Then we have uh, Arthur Peters from Belgium. I uh, have 
Gabor Bozic from Turkey. Junior you know, Dessina was seen in the picture a couple of minutes ago from Italy. Second Belgium, Panikuk, Vancouver in Canada. Peter Geller obviously been around forever and has a lot of uh, Olympic and gold medals, uh, medals to his name. And then we have Billy Bill Bain from Australia and Rafael Maron from Poland. Good quality field here. It shows the strength of depth. This is the B final of the K1 1000 meters. The A final is packed full of the, uh, well, we have the first three medalists of the, the Worlds last year and some really pedigree names there. They're lining up on this automatic starting system. We had no problems. I don't think we had any disqualifications so far. Very, very few false starts in the last couple of days. And they're off. Vancouver in lane number six. Slightly left on the blocks. He normally likes to go out and set the pace. With Dessino in lane number four, taking a good start, as well as Raphael Maron in lane number nine. As I mentioned, Duisburg, so far they've hosted five world championships. That they tried to host the 19, 2019 championships, but they missed out on a very close vote a couple of months ago to Seged, who will now hold those championships. Then number two, Arthur Peters from Belgium. I say there's two competitors from Belgium. In these finals today. So three athletes early to show. Peters lane number two, Vancouver in lane number six. And if you look at the graphics, they're showing uh, Martin McDowell from New Zealand in lane number one. New Zealand only have seven athletes who are traveling at the moment, but they're all really pulling their weight. Alan Vancouver then now taking slight control of the race, as one would expect. Now they're coming to the <coughs> halfway line in this competition and it's Vancouver from Canada with a boat length ahead of the field. He's done it all in this sport, has the Olympic gold medal. Last time out in London, he took the silver medal in the K1 1000, has the fastest time ever recorded in the 500 meters. representing Canada in the World Championships and possibly importantly for him, his hometown of Toronto, the Pan Am Games in July. Vancouver in, in your picture here. Still a boat length ahead, coming down to 250 metres to go. If you follow Twitter or follow, well, mainly Twitter, you'll find out that he's been uh, very few travel more. He had uh, February and March down in Australia, then been in Florida. Also has a lot of charity commitments, a lot of fun there. See how he can hold on. Coming down to the last 200 metres, and it's still Vancouverden who's leading by over a boat length. Long Pankuk maybe hasn't had his last word. Look at the conditions, absolutely perfect. They're starting to tighten up now, coming into the last 100 metres. Vancouver has led for all of the race, still has half a boat length, but lanes two, three, and five also coming back. Now, can he hold on down to the last 30 metres? It's Vancouver from Canada. Looks like he's just done enough today, and he holds on for the win. Vancouver then takes the lead, takes the win rather, from Lawrence Panikuk from Belgium.
If only you had decided yesterday to paddle to the line, it would have been a different story. But he's won the race for Canada. Three minutes, 35 seconds. The C final was won in three minutes, 36. So Adam Van Kuhn of Canada is so far the, the fastest K1 athlete on the water today. If you're just tuning in on the live feed, I'm Matthew Layton. I'm going to be with you for the rest of the day. For the A finals, have a couple of uh, guests coming in today. We've got Minnie or Emily Fornell, uh, who's going to be how and what. And then we have the silver tongue Peter Egan from Ireland also coming in to, uh, to have us a word. That should be quite fun today. So they're still unofficial, but Adam Van Kuverden takes the gold for Canada. Sorry, not takes the gold. His uh, wins the B final for Canada. Laurent Bannekoek uh, second, and Arthur Peters for Belgium comes in third. So Belgium second and third there. So I've always had a little th frog in third. I'm just going to drink water. Next event today is going to be the C final of the women's 500 meters. Mentioned Peter Egan's going to be coming in and joining us in about an hour and a half time. He's going to certainly have some interest in this race because younger sister Jenny Egan who won a bronze medal in the European Championships in the 5,000 meters. I think the first, uh, first medal for Ireland for quite some time, so that, that went down well. She's going to be in lane number one. Belgium are doing something right today. They have a, a competitor, Lisa Brooks, in the final. It's coming down, being called to the, to the start line. As we stress, this is the C final, so these are the, the girls that uh, haven't quite performed as they'd like to this weekend, but they're still in the C final, so they certainly give it their best. And there's some, there's some quality athletes in this final. Weather in Duisburg today looks like it's lightening up a little bit. It's certainly overcast, but the, it's not quite a mill pond. But the racing conditions do look fair without a wind. And then we follow through racing all day. We have the live finals later from 11:02 European time, and after that, a lot more. So the offers you see. Lane number eight, it's Kat MacArthur. The Australians are here with quite a substantial team and they're really switching the girls around. The priority clearly is going to be the K4 500 qualifying that boat for the Olympics, which will happen in Milan in August, but that's the same for everyone, I guess. Early Touche is in a Klineva from Kazakhstan in your picture there, with the Senke boat. They, they used it, the Nele, they used it in the Europeans in Machichi three weeks ago, and they used it in Portugal. It seems to come through the test, and you can see it has, looks like it has an inverted bow. 
there's no problem about photo finishes there because the actual furthest point forward is not at the bottom, it's in the middle, so it should be above the waterline. Already 200 metres to go, Kazakhstan from Canada. So if you have Orton in your picture coming in the boat, coming through 180 metres to go. Belgium, slight advantage as you come into the last 120 metres. But also it's Ivana Pnetova who has a lot of, uh, lot of results, a lot of finals to her name. He's looking to push in lane number two, but so far it looks like lane number five, lane number eight, Kat MacArthur also wants the victory as we come into the last 60 metres. There are three boats in a row, Slovakia, Belgium and Australia. So far lane number five, it's Belgium who's going to take the win. Belgium takes a win. And also, we have a Belgium athlete in the A final, which was uh, very exciting for the Belgium team watching them perform yesterday. So she managed to hold on. She had control of the race pretty much right through, and it looks like in lane number two, Ivana Knotova from Slovakia took the second position. There's four minutes to the start of the next race, which, looking at my card in front of me, is going to be the K1 500 meters B final. Well, there's the unofficial results, as you saw on your screen, Belgium taking the victory. B final is going to be interesting. We do have uh, Sertan Natasa Dushev Janic, who's... Uh, Back after a year out, uh, I believe her ambition from Hungary, clearly she's won uh, many, many uh, Olympic uh, goals with different partners over the years. One of the real top stars of this sport. Uh, she had back operations and she's back. It's going to be interesting to see how she performs. It's been a lot of press written that uh, it looks like they, they with uh, Kovac, they'd like to take the K2 500 berth. Going forward the Olympics, uh, going down the screen as you can see, Yvonne Schering, uh, former world champion in two, Bedek from Serbia, Melanie Gerhardt, Vrina Hantl, a young German's looking good, Martina Kolova, also Spela Ponorenko Janic. So they're big names here, Nadzena Liapashike from Belarus and Erin Burgo from Italy. It's the final of the, the B final for the 500 women. Interesting to see how the Germans go. They have a really strong team now. Last year, clearly their World Cup results were outstanding. Their World Championships results by their high levels were disappointing. They've changed the, uh, the team. Spele Pomwenko Janic from Slovenia had some... Uh, was Good results last week. She was down in Portugal with us all. It was a bit different. It was 33 degrees there. Here's slightly different. It's Melanie Gerhardt from Germany. Two Germans next lanes to each other. Verena Hantel also from Germany, one of the next generation who's been around a few years now, but they're trying to take the trying to take the main positions. Dina Bejec from Serbia. Serbia have a top, top. If you look at the percentage of the athletes they put out to the percentage of finalists they have, it's uh, really, really, someone's doing something right in the program there. Lane number nine, Irene Burgo from Italy. One 
A lot of eyes will be lane number one. See how Natasha on her quest to regain Olympic place after a year out, how she's going to perform. Yvonne Schering, on paper with her performances last year, uh, she would have been expected to make the expected to make the A final. She clearly won the gold medal at the 2011 Worlds with uh, Victoria Schwartz, who performed quite well last week, taking the gold in the K2 200. Anna Roxana. So they're lining up for the 500 meters B final live in the ICF second World Cup of the season. 2015 season from Duisburg. The style is preparing them, the buckets will drop and they'll be off. And there they go. The if you're looking for reference points, the C final a few minutes ago, the 250 mark was down in 57 seconds, so let's see how they compare to those today. Well, so far, if you look at the top of your picture, Natasha Janitz is uh, perhaps using this as a training run. We'll have to speak to her later and find out. But in lane number eight, Nadia Lyabchenka. The Belarus have six or seven athletes that they're switching quite a lot and have done for the last three or four years. They change in the K2s, K4s, but they're always there or thereabouts. So for the Germans in front of their home crowd, in front of their training partners, who are on the balcony opposite from where we sit. So it's a national center here in, uh, in Duisburg. One of the major four or five uh, centers for top class canoeing and rowing as well. So, so far they go through about a second halfway mark, faster than the actual C finalists did. On showing, but lane number five, it is Verena Hantel who looks like she's doing well. The cameras are looking at lane number two, Yvonne Showing, who's perhaps expected to do something. Top of your picture, Natasha Janic uh, hasn't really, she's really slowing up, so she's certainly not in the race at the moment. But coming down to the last 100 meters, it's going to be a three horse race number two, Austria, number five, Germany, and number eight, Belarus. Coming in your picture. It looks like Germany in the yellow boat are just edging ahead of four or five athletes now, fast finishing Belarus. So Germany take the victory with uh, perhaps Bela Ponorinojancic. She coming to the, really had a fast finish in lane number seven to really catch up there and put herself in the, in the action. But Rina Hantel from Germany takes the, uh, breathing heavily, take, takes the, the victory in the B final. Rina Hantel takes her very close lead there. She's 25 years old. Has to performances to her, her CV in the last three or four years. Taking gold with the K4 team. Won a silver in Duisburg in the World Championships. One of the Brits contemplating life. Clearly, as it's early in the day, the the grandstand. Uh, there's a few family members here to cheer on their loved ones, but yet to yet to fill up VIP section. Just to my left, there's a few uh, familiar characters having uh, having chats there. 
then in the boathouse, obviously, yeah, actually you can see that, and you can see that the boathouse, it's a hive of activity with the teams having their own allocated places. Verena Hantel takes first place in 155. Spele Ponomiemo Janic from Slovenia takes second. And Yvonne Schering, she's, as you see, by one hundredth of a second, she's uh, denied the second place. She takes the third place in this, and this is the, the women's B final we're watching. The A final will be in about just less than one and three quarters hours time. Magnificent course, the Germans always know how to put on a show. And the weather has been kind of the safe for with the most important thing in is fair racing, as we saw in, in Portugal. For the actual finals, it was fair racing. For some of the heats, there was a very warm, strong crosswind which uh, affected some of the, the canoeists. But here, the conditions are what we like to see. Next week, we're moving on to Copenhagen. So there's three World Cups in the ICF program. And then I guess the big event for most people, because it's a chance to qualify, get their quota places for the Olympic Games next year in Rio, is going to be Balan in mid-August. Quite a few of the Europeans are going off to the European uh, Games uh, in Baku, in Azerbaijan, in uh, about a month's time. And then we have the, North, the Americans going on to the Pan American Games in July in Toronto. So it's a busy season. It has been so far an extremely busy season for us. We've had the European Championships three weeks ago in Rachichi. It was good for some athletes to put down their early markers. So it's, it's interesting to see that some athletes were putting down really good performances and see how they can perform again. Yesterday in the heats, no, very few big surprises. Most of the names that we'd expect from their pedigree and their performance in the last couple of years actually made it through to the, made it through to the finals. I suppose the two major upsets were perhaps uh, Adam Van Kuberden, who we saw about 20 minutes ago winning the, the B final, not making it through to A final, uh, all they had it in his grasp, and then Yuri Shaban in the C1, 200 metres as well, coming a, a, a lowly, a lowly fourth position there. But apart from that, most of the big names are through. Who we have to look out for in a couple of hours' time? Lisa Carrington, she's not going to win the K1 200 metres because she's going to be at the airport. Uh, she's actually only competing in the K1 500 uh, today. Yeah, the reason we for that, I was speaking to her yesterday, she has quite a charged program. The last few years she's been only at two World Cups, this year she's doing all three World Cups, so she just needs to manage her priorities and clearly the priority is going to be the, towards the, the end of the, the, the year. But so far she's unbeaten, so it's interesting to see how she performs in the K1 500 A final. Evelina Wudneska from Poland is going to be possibly on paper her main rival, who took out the gold medal in the Europeans two weeks ago. So the action continues. <coughs> it's a different schedule this year to last year. Last year it started with the K1 was the K1 1000 and then moved down the thousands on the Sunday was the sprints. But this year, in order to try and mirror slightly the schedule that's going to take place in the Olympics next year, they're mixing and matching. So we're going to see in the A final starting off with the C1 1000 and then moving on to the K1 1000, and then we, that's for men, obviously, and then we go down to the women with the K1 500. Then we do a split, we change completely. We go down to the K2 200 men in the actual sprinting. So at the moment here, it's 22.10, and the next event we're going to see is going to be, well, should be off in three or four minutes, and that's going to be the C final of the K2 200 men. You can just see, is that going to be moving on to perhaps the B final? Because on my program here, I have no race. Let's have a look, see where we are. The B final probably looks more right. If you see great facilities here in Duisburg, you have the track, then just to the left of the finishing line, next to the tower, you have a little canal that goes into the, the big warm up and the, and the lane that moves right up the course. I also have in the same park, it's surrounded by trees and we have a, a 32,000 seater football stadium. And it's all within uh, kicking distance of Duisburg, so it's middle of Germany, so it's a great facility here. I'll let 
you watch the images. The next final up looks like it's going to be the V final of the K2 200 meters. So it's actually going to be six minutes until the next race. encourage you to use the ICF uh, on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, we're doing our best to give you uh, interviews, uh, flash quotes, uh, showing you exactly what's going on going on in the actual course. So please feel free to uh, to join in with the debate and we'll try and accommodate any requests you have. There's also there's a couple of days after the, or four days after the each World Cup, the, uh, the, the ICF produced, or it's hit the roof of its production team based out of Geneva, they actually produce a 26-minute docu documentary. So if you have a little bit of time, you can uh, take the atmosphere of what happened. There's a, a profile of a certain athlete uh, in Portugal. It was the Australians, uh, uh, Floody and Lockheed, that's Naomi Flood and Lachlan team who are actually talking to the ICF, talking to us for a couple of minutes and see what their life's all about and how they're taking the switch from ski surf to top level kayaking. We have some very good pictures of the GoPros to show the actual emotion coming on and we try and cover, the, I think 19 races, clearly we can't cover them all, but we try and do throughout the season a selection of races. And coming through the season. We also have uh, a few questions so you can find out behind the scenes about that. That's, I say that's available if you go to the ICF site. You can find that on the on the Facebook page. To see uh, Max Hoff with his remarkably uh, bright boat. It has a, a red tip and then uh, looks like a zebra boat. He's going to do some warming up. He's going to be off in the K1 1000 meters in about an hour and a half's time. see on their screen. I believe they're often about two and a half, three minutes. These are the entrants for the K2 men 200 meter final. Sweden, Turkey, Australia, Sweden, Argentina, Canada, Brazil, Poland, and Slovakia. So we have a, a good spread across the board there. Number nine in your picture, Martin Varda, Miroslav Zatko from Slovakia. So the athletes now are just moving down the last 100 meters or so. Johan Lilia and Joel Ennis from Sweden taking up lane number one. They'll be in action for probably about, judging by yesterday, anything from 31 to 33 seconds of flat out action. Managed to take up to about 6.5 meters a second, which is about 23, 24 kilometers an hour. Extraordinary straight weights. And in the A final, we have all the, the big names in the last uh, two or three years, the Serbs, the Russians, interesting to see if they back on form. Ronnie Rao, Tom Leibischer from Germany are going to be in there, and the Olympic bronze medalists uh, for Liam Heath, Johnny Moynt, uh, sorry, Johnny Scalefield from Great Britain are also going to be competing. Two teams from Sweden, Christian Vankist and Eric Svensson. Lane 
Canadian Gagnon Mono. They're still experimenting apparently the Canadian team who's going to join um, Luc Fennel in the, the top team. And by the way, Fennel is going to be in the final with uh, Ryan Cochran in about an hour or so's time. Brazil were in action last weekend in Portugal. They managed to carry it forward this weekend. I think after that, most of them were flying, flying back home. start is preparing them for 30 odd seconds of flat out action. Sweden, Turkey, Australia, Sweden, Argentina, Canada, Brazil, Poland, Slovakia. And they're off. Well, it's very much all in a line. Perhaps Argentina taking it out in lane number five. Sweden in lane number one. Lane number four, it looks like Sweden, boat number two, have a slight advantage coming up to the last 100 metres. Sweden certainly taking it on in lane number five. It's Argentina, but Sweden look like they've led all the way. And yes, in the end, a comfortable victory of this leg for Sweden. Christian Svankist and Eric Svensson first across the line. And they win by one meter. Looks like Argentina. Miguel Camera, Esquel, Gigi Acomo, perhaps taking the second place. just stepping out of the water. It's going to be eight minutes until the next race. So the unofficial results, Sweden take it from Argentina with Canada. Just 0.43 off the pace there. Etienne Morneau, Marc Alexandre Gagnon.
play if you're watching it on the live stream five minutes until the next race <laughs> If you've just yeah, yeah, tuned in now, next couple really of minutes we're going to show some highlights feet. of the B finals and C finals that have already taken place this morning. Italy came and took the first race, which was the C1 1000. Check. Three. Three minutes of highlights, so uh, sit back and enjoy uh, what perhaps you've missed or perhaps you've seen. Johnny Boynton just missing out on the, the first place there in the B final. The C final, rather. Thank you for tuning in. A little bit more of the highlights of what's happened so far this morning from Duisburg in the ICF World Cup. And about three and a half minutes until the next race now. The starter is calling two minutes until the next race. The starter is calling the paddlers in for the C1 men 200 meter final. Very clear now from France. The France, with, with a couple of exceptions, they have the under-23 team here this week. Last week in uh, Portugal, they, they took some good medals and had some really, really strong competitors in there. See in the top of your picture, lefty uh, Chris Calvert from Great Britain. Lane number four, Stefan Kire, who is expected to perform well. He has made a, a fair few A finals. There you are in this picture. So judging by his performance in the last couple of years, we'd expect him certainly to be up there, thereabouts. This distress is the B final of the C1 200. Lane number five, Uzbekistan, Koyev. I wonder if we're going to show lane number six, which is Ben uh, Tadioli from Canada. You see just in the red there in the middle of the picture, he uh, 
He missed out on the battle against Jason McCombs for the place, the spot to go to the Worlds and the Pan American Games. Last year he was fractionally ahead. They have the best of three system in Canada and this year he lost uh, very closely in the trials at home and then lost, uh, unfortunately, missing out on the final today. But they are off. Lane number nine at the bottom of your picture. He is the, the quality athlete in this frame with a very interesting uh, design on his boat. It is the, the Olympic and the world champion Yuri Shaban from Ukraine. Well, at the bottom of your picture, it's Yuri Shaban in the middle in lane number four. It is Germany, Stefan Kire. Those are two expected athletes, but in lane number six, of well, it is Canada, Ben Tardioli. So coming down to the last 20 meters, it looks like it's Yuri Shaban at the bottom with, oh, that's going to be very close. Germany, Ukraine, and Canada. Well, the camera's focusing on Stefan Kirche. Yuri Shaban. Last couple of years, in 2012, he won the gold medal in the Olympic Games in London, the C1-200. 2013, didn't compete in the international scene. Uh, 2014, and he went to one uh, international regatta, I believe, then took home the World uh, World Championships in Moscow. We were there, and it was a, it was a really exciting race with uh, Alex uh, Korokoshkosh. The A finals will be coming in the same order as we've actually seen the, the B's and C's. So as of 11 o'clock in Central European time, we start with the... There's Yuri Shaban stepping out of his boat. Where he's given the winner here. I don't know if that's official yet. It did look incredibly close. Just having a word with the giant Stefan Holtz, who'll be going a little bit later in the A-final. Next race is actually going to be in 13 minutes. So we'll keep the images flowing. That you see in your boat. No doubt about who is representing Yuri Shaban from Ukraine. And he's given the on the screen, they've given him the, the victory. Don't know what he's trying to say with his bait, we'll have to perhaps ask him. So if you're just tuning in, in the ICF, it's unofficial. They've given it the same time. Look at that on your screen, 40.675, and to the nearest hundredth of a second, the same time. But the pictures of Shane uh, Yuri Shaban. We'll have to wait for the official results there. And Stefan Kiri. We know those two are pretty close. With uh, Ben Tardioli from Canada is coming in third. My mistake of the day was uh, Stefan Holtz clearly was in this uh, in this race as well. The local coot. The birds actually do. Uh, the, I know in the worlds here a couple of years ago we had some near misses with the actual with some of the birds on the course, but it is in the middle of a, a huge green park, so it's not surprising that the the birds do feel that they have some sort of rights to the to the, the water. And in the evening, in fact, they do take it over. Stefan Holtz, as I said by mistake, uh, he's so often in the uh, in the C2 final. I just mistook him there, but clearly the, the giant was in the uh, in the in the B final today. So ten minutes more until the actual next race.
live from Duisburg for the 2015 Sprint World Cup. It's the second regatta of the season. First weekend we're in sunny Portugal, a place about 20 kilometres from the coast called Montemar Velho, which a lot of the fans will know about because they obviously, many, many athletes pass their winters there doing some training in a great facility. That track was laid down about 1990s. This five example of Duisburg was put down in 1935, used extensively for rowing, as well as, of course, uh, canoeing. Don't know how many World Cups they've had since they really started coming in 1980, but a stack. Let's just keep up with the action, tell what's going on. Next race is going to be joining us for is taking place in about three, three and a half minutes and is going to be the C final of the Olympic event, which is the K2 1000 meters. <coughs> Canada putting a team in there, Sweden, Slovakia, Serbia, Great Britain, lane number five, Estonia, Denmark, Kazakhstan and Turkey. I believe there's about 50, 52 nations competing in this regatta this weekend, well over 600 athletes. New Zealand team just warming up, they're going to be in action a little bit later today. And the grandstand is the sun's almost peaking through, you can probably see if you see some images you can see a little bit of sun coming through the cloud cover, which is good to see. We saw Max Hoff about 25 minutes ago uh, pass in front of us because he was going to do some warm-up. He's just coming back now. He's going to be competing in the K1 1000 a few time. Here we go. It looks like the start list is put in front of you for the K2 men. <laughs> to break them down a little bit, Canada, Chris Mehak and Brian Malfesti. Sweden, Albert Pettersson and Joachim Lindberg. Well, you can see the graphics in front of you. Zoric and Hankovitsky from Serbia. Their K2 200 meter boys uh, looked really, really on form uh, yesterday. Clearly they were the, the world champions. They just missed out on the Europeans. So you can see it's a very large course here. So you can see a whole host of athletes warming up and preparing themselves for the next events. Slovakia, Deni uh, Maisak and Tibor Linka. So Duisburg, about half an hour from the airport in uh, Dusseldorf. So ideally situated for athletes from many countries. And the Brits, Matt Barley and Will Rutherford, who's obviously a specialist of the, the longer distances. Last year he was competing with Johnny Bouncen, who we saw just miss out of the first place in the C final about coming on pretty much about an hour ago now. Lane number seven, Denmark, Emil Noe and Niels Boy. Denmark clearly have a, a very powerful team, Rennie Holton Paulson, Henrietta Engel, Emil Johansson in the the K2, so we're we'll looking for some medals and depends what colour. They've been around from Estonia for quite a while now. It's Kasper Sula and Tano Tutsi. 
often making the, the B finals, A finals. Today they're in the C final. Just shows how strong the actual field is. So looking at the course from the finish line on the left is, is lane number one coming down so it's a classic way easy to read there's going to be nine lanes allowing nine teams to compete in each of the races And they're off in the C final of the K2 1000 meters. Looks like showing early are the Estonians who would expect to. Uh, well, they have an interesting race tactic here. They're actually flying out of the blocks. It's going to be about three minutes 20 of action. Can they keep the pace going? Well, they've now developed one and a half boat lengths lead. bit like a mill pond with very, very little uh, breeze. Oh, because they were practicing their, their starts, clearly. They've, uh, they've decided that's enough effort for today. Lane number nine is Turkey now taking course of the action. Different athletes clearly will have different tactics. Looks like the Estonians were practicing their... 200 meter skills. So Turkey now taking it out. Carlos Miguel Narcisco Marquez and Ozturk Kuru at the bottom of your picture. So half of the race gone and they go through in 138 as a reference point. 1 minute 38. This is the C final of the K2 1000 meters. Yeah. Serbia setting the pace with the Brits, Matt Bailey and Rutherford in the second place with 200 meters to go. It looks like it's a battle between Serbia and Great Britain, with Sweden still in the picture there. Britain up, slightly upping the pace. Moving down into the last 120 metres, but Serbia are continuing to have a quarter of a boat length ahead of Great Britain. It's lanes four, lanes five, moving into the last 100 metres. Looks like Serbia are controlling the race at this point. And in fact, they go on to take a, a controlled victory, leading by half a boat length for most of the actual race. Zoric and Hankowski from Serbia have won the C final for the K2 1000. You can see the time of reference.
follow Twitter, but I, I do, and there's a lot of athletes uh, tweeting, uh, tweeting out there, maybe hopefully putting the ICF uh, canoe uh, hashtag there, and then we can actually see that uh, they're very excited. The are excited to make the, the finals and looking forward to the events today, as well as other nations, of course. The victorious Serbian team stepping out of their boats. You can see just in front of your picture, you see the, the where the awards are going to be given out. So the unofficial timing of the K2 men 1,000 meters C final, Serbia, Great Britain, Kazakhstan giving the third place, Denmark, Canada and Turkey. Only 2.3 seconds off the pace. K2 1000 men B final now, so it just shows the, the depth of field we've had uh, in the last couple of days. Over 600 athletes have competed in various stages of this competition. Who's going to go in the B final? Well, you can see your country made to Batik Kushera and Jakob Pikar there, top of your screen, lane number four from the Czech Republic. Vlajcek and Tar, well, they are the world champions. Uh, they obviously had a. They're, 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 well in their mid-30s, it would be interesting to see how they perform, uh, perform throughout this season, but they, they between them they have a stack of uh, world girls' medals. Lane number six is Italy, Vipamonti and Batelli. Then if you've seen the Australians yet, Riley Fitzsimmons, he's going to be going in the K4 a bit later tomorrow, so it's going to be interesting to see how he adapts uh, in the in the back seat probably with uh, Jordan Wood who took the, the back seat last week and did remarkably well because obviously he clearly won the gold medal there in Portugal. So they're lining up, this is the B final of the K2 1000 metres. Iran in lane one, followed by Belgium, Australia, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Italy, Poland, Norway and Finland. At the bottom of your picture, who's going to be the first away? Well, just a few edges on this. On <laughs> need to push themselves in the bucket. I haven't seen any false starts yet today, so it's good, good to see. Holding them a little bit on the start gates, trying to make sure that everyone doesn't have a, a, an unfair advantage. Perhaps under 1,000 metres is not so critical as the uh, the 200 metres. But they're away this time. The B final of the K1, K2 rather clearly, 1,000 metres. Setting off at a fast pace. Some of the birds are also just ahead as pacemakers. I haven't heard any deaths, but uh, some of them do take large risks, some of the birds there. So it looks like Belgium are taking a, a good early start. It's uh, Olivier Kallenberg and Tom Brooks. Olivier obviously has uh, done a lot of partnership with uh, Lawrence Panikuk, who came second in the B final for the K1 1000 meters about half an hour ago. That was won by Adam Van Kuvenen from Canada. We're talking about the B final. As you see on the graphics here, if you want to express an opinion, uh, uh, be in touch with the the ICF the community uh, please feel free to do so 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 far Australians are showing that they are in business both young Riley Fitzsimmons I believe he was voted the best performer in the scuff se surf ski season uh, so he's obviously a big name of the future Anders Gustafsson is uh, doing remarkably good work there with the uh, with the 1000 boys. He's actually not making it to the Big Atta. He's got some training to do at home. Uh, but we'll say hello if you're actually tuning in, watching the there. So the halfway mark now, 500, 500 meters to go.
And it's the young Australians in a very smart boat looking to set the pace. 136. With Belgium and Slovakia taking the next paces. Australia now pulling it away to almost a full boat length ahead. These two characters, I say, Riley and Jordan, are switching. Last week, Jordan took the number four seat in the K4. That's his interview. And then this week, it's Riley, I believe, going to take the same place. Clearly, they're the Olympic champions in 2012. But they're coming down to the last 200 meters, and it's clear water for the Australians. They really look to control the race so far. But lane number seven, as you possibly saw, the uh, Brzezinski and Flocek from Poland haven't had the last to say. Coming into the last 100 meters, Australia, it's their race to lose. This is the B final, by the way. Coming down to the last 100 meters, Australia still have almost a boat length but fast finishing are the poles in lane number seven. Can Australia hold on? Coming into the last few metres, Poland is looking very, very strong, but Australia takes the victory by about 30 centimetres from Poland. Australia, I believe, have the counting up a little bit while ago. Uh, they have seven boats in the finals today. Riley Fitzsimmons and Jordan Wood. Jordan famous wants to hurt himself as much as possible, so hopefully he's had a happy day at the And young Riley Fitzsimmons also they uh, looks like they've given it their all. Very, very close at the finish. The Australians went to a boat length and a half midway through the course, but they were clawed back by the Polish team and they managed to hold on. Coming to you live from Duisburg in Germany. The next race, by the way, is going to take place in about seven and a half hours time. The next final, here's, sorry, here's the results. It's uh, 319.98A. Australia take it by two tenths of a second from Poland with Italy 0.8 back, followed by Slovakia, Czech Republic, Norway, Finland, Belgium, and Iran. Riley Fitzsimmel, Jordan Wood taking a victory in the B final. And here's, you see, waving to the fans. Next race is going to be in probably about five minutes' time now. As you saw, the I was being informed in my earpiece, it's six minutes until the next race, which is going to be the K2 women 500 meter B final. Teams from Switzerland, Turkey, USA, New Zealand, Kazakhstan, Slovakia. Slovakia's so instincts, we have the two girls who actually raced earlier today in the B final, C final of the 
500 meters, Ivana Knotova and Martina Kolova racing there. France have a team in, Netherlands have a team in, and Brazil have a big squad over here, as they had last week in Portugal. They're also racing in this race. They'll be race nine. I see about four and a half, five minutes until the race gate, so they're just setting themselves up for the, uh, the race of their weekend. starters as you can hear probably in the background we're just going to be showing you some highlights for a couple of minutes if you've actually missed the action or if you'd like to see it again that was a really close finish there you saw with the uh, Yoshiban uh, I believe he took the, the, took the medal I thought that sorry took the win the subs as well you see in the, uh, the B final the K2 1000 meters Four minutes until the start of the next race, which is going to be for the women. It's the K2 500 meter B final. Clear this is an Olympic event, so we have some good depth of field. Who to look out for? Well, lane number five, Jamie Lovett and Ketlin Ryan, obviously two of the key components of the, as you see, you see the countries there, the key components of the New Zealand K4 team that won last weekend Switzerland Buschweiler Naomi so obviously their, their father was an Olympian and the sister obviously was competing together last year with Livia Hudsonschild that's the local litter picking service which is obviously uh, full on at work today so the starting team they couldn't wish for better conditions today so they no winds, no waves. So far, faultless display. Athletes are preparing themselves. You see in the white there in lane number one are the Swiss we've just mentioned. Uh, lane number six, they, uh, they both competed a few minutes ago. And lane number eight, it's the Netherlands. Uh, Femke Roos, Heli Pol, both familiar faces around the scene for the last several years made some A-finals before. Janne Meyer, Lea Caro, they have a young team, born 1993-1992, that's their under-23s, they're actually pushing forward today. Lane number four, they're out for business, Jamie Lovett and Kathleen Ryan. And lane number five, Kazakhstan. Zoya Anachenko and Katiana Kanivets. Both, both teenagers still. They've been, both been on the water, these two, in the C final and the B final earlier today. They've been together as a pair. It's remarkable if you look at the last three or four years when they go in individual events. They pretty much always finish next to each other, uh, but as a pairing, it certainly works well. And Turkey, it's good to see Turkey have some uh, representatives. They're making the B finals. We saw the K2 uh, 1000 a few minutes ago. Switzerland, Fabio Wies, I believe he took third about half an hour ago in the K1 1000. Small team here from Switzerland. And let's not forget. Brazil, Adilas Ratos, Matos dos Rias, and Aurelia Panto. Clearly, the excitement is going to be building 
around the Olympic Games taking place next. Uh, maybe the favourites on paper might be lane number six because they've raced an awful lot together and they've competed in many, many A finals. But each season starts again. We haven't mentioned lane number three yet. Maggie Hayden, Kathleen McElroy, they put their expenses on their credit card because funding's not what it perhaps ought to be or could be. So they pay their way. That's why they, they're here for a couple of uh, regattas and then they, then they fly back to, uh, to the States to pay off their bills and uh, learn from the experiences they've had this, uh, this season. Well, they're lining up. Should be off in a few seconds. This is the B final of the K2 500 meters for the women. Looks like the French in lane number seven are the first to share. That's Joanna Meyer and Lia Courant. But the Brazilians having a fast straight rate. It's uh, in front of us, but it's about 500 meters away, so I can't quite see. We need to see who's in the front there. And it's the New Zealanders, the strike of the K4 500 team. Uh, Jamie Lovett is uh, is really starting to uh, to set the pace with the Slovaks predictably two lanes down in the red boat, taking a, a comfortable second position and the bright Kazakhstan with the yellow tops uh, so far second start. But uh, New Zealand, not the most vocal pair. Jamie, when she has to push for her last 100 metres, says, come on, Jamie, keep it together. We're asking about this yesterday. But so far, it looks like they're coming out to 200 metres to go. And the tactic of the New Zealand is to take it out fast with Kazakhstan, however, on their shoulders with the yellow tops. New Zealand, 51 seconds. Here you go. Still holding on. Vocal support there from the New Zealand uh, team who are actually just under the big screen which is opposite to us coming into the last 120 meters and two teams are certainly ahead of the rest of the field it's new zealand black tops kazakhstan yellow tops how much can they push kazakhstan look like they're coming through it's interesting to see who can hold on with 70 meters to go it's neck and neck maybe half a meter for New Zealand, which is slightly pulling ahead, coming down to the last 20 metres. New Zealand going to take it just ahead of Kazakhstan. New Zealand have a small team, only seven athletes here, but they're certainly all pulling their weight. New Zealand take the victory from Kazakhstan. I must stress this is the B final. The A final is going to be coming up in about an hour and a half's time. Jamie Lovett, Kathleen It's like the Lisa Carrington effect is really taking, uh, taking place in New Zealand with more and more athletes uh, stepping up to the mark. Well, we're stepping up, we're approaching about an hour and a, no, about half an hour to the A finals. I've just been informed in my ear that we have 11 minutes until the next B final is going to take place here, coming to you live from Duisburg in Germany. Zealand, Kathleen Ryan, Jamie Lovett stepping out of the bait, taking a, a very courageous victory there. Well, the unofficial results, 146.8. New Zealand take it from Kazakhstan, who look like they're coming back in the end by only 0.3 of a second, with Slovakia in third, United States taking up the fourth place in the B final.
Still about eight or nine minute minutes until the next race, which is going to be the last race before the televised A finals go on. This clearly there is going to be a, a final in its own right. All fun and games here in front of the the cameras. A good camera team set up, racing for looking for the activities. The sun looks like it's going to come out just in time for the main event. So, if you're unfamiliar with the course, it's built 80 years ago. Had five world championships. Is used for rowing. Clearly, it's a national base of the German Canoe Federation for their for their sprint teams, and it looks beautiful. Four minutes, four minutes until the next race is off. see the athletes cycling around it's going to be over 500 Canada Brazil Germany Czech Republic Senegal Germany Hungary Milan. so as you need to really look out if you look at the recent form is Katie Vincent who won two golds last weekend in Portugal sorry gold in several she was the junior world champion last year from Hungary. They're putting forward uh, some strong, uh, strong athletes. Jana Jova from the Czech Republic. Uzbekistan obviously have a huge uh, pedigree in this sport. In the later, we have uh, Vadim Menkov going to be competing in the C1 1000 meter final. And Joanna Hendrik from Germany.
Aram Gier from Senegal in lane number six. Fairly small team, but they're very tight chat with me yesterday. Delighted to be here. There's a couple more minutes before the, the ladies start off. There are two Germans competing today, it's Catherine Dua. So they're on the <laughs> So we're lining up for the C1 500 meters final in front of us. And my two guests are just taking the seats and here they are they're off Czech Republic look to be off to a, a good start with lane number two from Brazil Nascimento Conceau she was a Van Danse she we saw her last week she put in a, a good performance there but at the bottom of your picture, it looks like Hungary are going out full blast. So it's a 500 meters race. And Hungary taking it out for Bala in lane number eight as we speak. Look at the conditions, absolute mill pond. Couldn't wish for better conditions. The sun's coming out. It's about 20 degrees, or will be in a few minutes' time, and it's like a mill pond out there. The spread right out against the round the course. Lane number eight, as you see from Hungary, looking to put out a strong performance here. 200 meters to go, and it's a clear three boat lengths lead from three other athletes in your picture. Trailing the race up to four boat lengths lead now from Hungary. It's going to be interesting to see uh, the tactics of the other athletes. Do they try and chase it or do they slow down a bit for later events? Lane number one. Looks like Katie Vanso is coming back slightly. As they move into the last 100 meters, controlling the race all the way, it's Virag Bala for Hungary. Unless she falls in, she's going to take a convincing, clear victory. But it's interesting for the second place, there's three boats in a row. Lanes number one, number five, and number nine. Well, there's no doubt about the victory by three boat lengths. Hungary take the lead. Looks like in lane number nine, Uzbekistan take the second with very, very close for third place. Canada, maybe they're calling it, or Germany. The other athletes finishing as well. So no doubt about the we take the victory in the C1 500 meters women event.
As you can see, the slow motion is just showing the, uh, the skill of these athletes as they uh, maneuver their way up the course. We're going to be going live. Well, that's it for the first section of the show here. We've been uh, coming to you live from Duisburg. We're going to have a, a little break for a few minutes, and then we're going to be back with the A finals. And we're going to start off with the men's C1 1000. Going to be with you for about an hour and a quarter to cover the eight top events I'm at later, and we'll be joining you in a few minutes.